Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more Khosrow, Prince of Persia, Extra History number 2 by Extra Credits. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I'd love it if you join the Discord. Okay, Khosrow, I think probably going to be experiencing the death of your papa in this, in this episode and the rise of Khosrow, I'm assuming, so. Well, it says it in Tao, Prince of Persia, so maybe, maybe papa won't die yet. Maybe he'll die in episode 3. Let's find out. Following his father's death, Kavad had staved off disaster time and again for the Empire. But yearly peace tributes to the Hephthalites had left the Iranian treasury bare. Nothing was left to help the farmers who fed the Empire. Without help, Kavad's people would soon starve. In desperation, he turned to his neighbors, the Eastern Roman Empire. <gasps> Gasp. Bye. Despite countless generations of conflict between Rome and Iran, the two empires had been at peace for nearly a century. Nomadic tribes across the Caucasus Mountains to the north had forced them to agree on terms of mutual defense. Iran would guard the pass through the mountains, called the Caucasian Gates, so long as Rome sent money to help pay the soldiers. But the Romans had gotten nice. kinda distracted. They were all like, we're kinda dealing with these other wars in the north right now, and also in the west, and wait. Ah, oh, crap, the Ostrogoths just took Rome. Like, actual Rome. Oh, jeez. Can you guys handle the Northern Tribes thing while we- t Hey, you guys give that back, I'm not kidding! So Rome had stopped paying for the northern defense. And since Iran had their own problems at the time, multiple wars with the Hephthalites and their king dying, followed by a decade of political turmoil, they weren't exactly in a position to press the issue. Yeah. But now, now that Kavad had finally pulled his empire back together, now it was time to press. Kavad reached out to the Roman Emperor, Anastasius, and insisted that Rome pay its share. <clears throat> that would take some of the strain off of Iran's treasury, so Kavad could subsidize his farmers and avoid a famine. But Anastasius replied, saying, Well, we never technically signed an agreement or anything, <laughs> so it, Rome. we're not going to pay you back. But hey, we can give you a loan. To which Kavad responded, I'll loan my fist to your face, and went to war. Now, oh. waging war is generally not a good idea for empires on the brink of ruin, but Kavad yeah, really no. needed this one. Raiding food and supplies from the border cities of the Roman Empire solved his immediate problem of feeding his own empire. And yeah, it also solved solution. his long-term problem of getting the Hephthalites off his back. As Iran's eastern neighbors, the Hephthalites very much enjoyed... Get him! watching Iran go to war with the West. They liked it so much that they sent their own soldiers to join in the looting, which was actually pretty handy because the Hephthalites had wiped out the core of Iran's army ten years ago. This war lasted only a few years, but it ended with Rome finally agreeing to pay tribute to Iran. Kavad had adopted the superior swords and bows of his Hephthalite allies and built his broken army back into a power to be feared. But he had done so at the cost of reigniting Iran's age-old rivalry with Rome. The Romans now openly broke their prior treaty obligations. Both empires had previously agreed to stop building military fortifications on their shared border, as a gesture of good faith. But as soon as Kavad got distracted by Turkic tribes invading through the Caucasian gates, Anastasius bought every building in a small village called Dara and rapidly built it into a shoddy little fort. When Kavad huh. turned back Dara, huh? We know about that place. <laughs> around and saw a fort where there had definitely not been a fort before, he asked, Hey, did you put that fort there? And Anastasius answered, Hmm? That? No, no, no. No, that's always been there. That's always been there. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nailed it. Here, take some gold. Go fight your Turks or whatever. Kavad did have his hands full with the whole Turk situation, and then beating up his former Hephthalite allies, so it took him a while to get back to this Rome issue. By the time he finally did, things had changed. Anastasius had died without Rip. declaring an heir. An upstart pig farmer named Justin had stepped into his place, although all reports indicated that his nephew Justinian was the real brains behind the throne. Still, it was a stark reminder to the aging Kavad that it was never too soon to choose an heir. The most obvious candidate was his eldest son, Kawus, who not only had seniority, but currently served as a governor of a northern province. And a sick beard. But Kawus was a fervent Mazdakite, and Kavad had spent years now trying to distance himself from that whole mess. His second son had lost an eye, which technically disqualified him under Iranian rules of succession. And then- What?! But he looks so badass! 
Then there was Khosrow, his third son, his favorite. The one who had already made allies at court by denouncing the Mazdakites. Not a hard choice, actually. But the Mazdakites remained a problem. Even without Kavad's support, their goals of a classless society and equal distribution of wealth continued to win converts across the empire. They were still vastly outnumbered by followers of traditional Zoroastrianism, though, and a backlash eventually swelled against the Mazdakites and their radical ideas. Priests pushed to enforce official doctrine all across the empire, even in the border territories, but I don't. Yes, you do! Which Iran had traditionally allowed to do their own thing. For many of those territories, doing their own thing meant being Christian. So having Zoroastrian doctrine suddenly enforced on them did not go over very well. It all came to a head in 524 CE when one Iranian territory with a Christian king decided to defect to Rome. Kavad yes. reached out to Justin to see if they could resolve this peacefully. Justin, buddy, uh, hey, just a thought, maybe stop accepting our runaway territories into your empire and let's just be friends, okay? And hey, as a gesture of good faith to seal this friendship, I'll let you adopt Khosrow as your son. The adoption offer was mostly a formality. Khosrow was a grown man, he wasn't exactly gonna move to Constantinople and start calling Justin. Clean your room. Actually, you're not my dad. And dad. But the gesture could bring the two empires together, and Roman support could help Khosrow claim the throne when Kavad died. In fact, the Iranians had done exactly the same thing for Rome in the 4th century, when a previous shah had adopted the emperor's son to secure his succession. Kavad felt that it was high time Rome returned that favor. Justin hmm. loved this idea. Oh. His advisors did not love it as much. Oh. They worried that this symbolic gesture might be the first step of a sneaky campaign to place Khosrow on the throne of the Roman Empire. Uh, they suggested maybe tone it down a little. So ambassadors from both sides met on the border, with Khosrow himself waiting in the wings. The Romans said, Great news, our emperor will adopt you. But not as a Roman and an equal son. And no, he's already got one of those. But mm. he will adopt you as a barbarian. To which Khosrow responded, He can adopt my fist to his face and went to war. Got him! The war started out great for Iran. Kicking the Romans up and down the frontier felt just like old times. By now, though, Justin had died and left the empire oh, in the hands of his areas. ambitious nephew, who began an aggressive push to fortify more places along the border. The newly reinforced city of Dara, which Kavad always knew would be trouble, handed Iran their first major loss. In the peace negotiations that followed, Kavad insisted that the Romans pull down their fortifications at Dara and start paying their fair share to defend the Caucasian gates. He did not live to hear Justinian's response. Kavad passed away in 531 CE, Rip. leaving a will that declared Khosrow should inherit his throne. The nobles quickly voted to confirm his choice, and at last, it was Khosrow's time to shine. Whoa! But all the problems from his father's reign hit Khosrow oh no! at once. A new wave of invaders poured through the Caucasian gates, and the Iranian army was still tied up in the war with Rome. Khosrow called on his brother Kawus, who still governed a province up north, to repel the invaders. Kawas took care of the problem quickly, but nice. then claimed that his victory proved that maybe he should be Shah instead of Khosrow. Uh, yes. And since Kawas was a Mazdakite, Mazdak and his followers immediately joined his cause. Khosrow needed his army back, which meant he needed to make peace with Justinian and recall the army from the borders of Rome. He invited Justinian's envoys into his court, but the envoys replied that they would not negotiate anything. Justinian had caught wind of Kawas' rebellion and hoped to sow as much chaos into Iran as he could. So, he refused to recognize- I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. ...nize Khosrow as the new Shah. Kawas came to Tessiphon to press his claim to the throne, and Khosrow watched his allies begin slipping away. Most nobles refused to recognize his brother, but a few quietly began to switch sides. The Mazdakites had given Kawas a strong base of support, and Khosrow decided that he needed to take that support away. He invited Mazdak and his people to come to his palace without Kawas, promising to hear their demands. The invitation was a trap. As yes. the Mazdakites entered his courtyard, Khosrow had them cut down. Yep. One story, which is probably just a story, but it goes to show how ruthless Khosrow was perceived to be, says that he planted their corpses upside down in his garden, and invited Mazdak to gaze upon these unique and beautiful trees. Then he had Mazdak hanged from the gallows. Oh. Now that Kawus that is fucking brutal. no longer had his most powerful ally, he was easy prey. 
Cosro captured him and dragged him in front of the priests. He offered to set Kawus free if he begged forgiveness in front of all the holy men at court. Kawus replied that he preferred death to humiliation, and Kosro obliged. Then he hunted down every one of Kawus's sons and executed them before they could even think of avenging their father or stealing the throne. It was at this point that Kosro Yo. returned his attention to Justinian's envoys and informed them that he was now, without question, the Shah of Iran. Would they like to make peace with him now? Justinian decided that, uh, yes, he very much would. He handed over 11,000 pounds of gold to pay for the defense of the Caucasian gates and withdrew his military base from Dara. But Khosro would not forget or forgive this Roman emperor <laughs> for failing to support his succession. So, hold on. Are you telling me the events that happened within the Justinian series is because Khosro was still very butthurt? Petty king. I love it. We love pettiness here. <laughs> that was Khosro, Prince of Persia, Extra History, number two, by Extra Credits. Um, this was a pretty good... Yeah, I'm liking this series. Uh, this is a really well-paced series, I think, so far. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.